I'd like to call this meeting to order. Our presentation of uh, colors is uh, by Irwin High School, and it, um, the instructor is Sergeant Major Carland. Uh, we welcome Irwin High School. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd ask that you remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you, you may be seated. At this time, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda and uh, note that it, on the consent agenda that we're pulling the item uh, concerning the Irwin High School request for a vendor substitution to next month. Uh, could I get a um, motion to approve? So moved. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, I'd like to announce that uh, Ms. Buchanan is joining us tonight. Can't you see her right here uh, <laughs> via telephone? And they are managing that in this wonderful technology place right back here in the back. And we appreciate them doing that as well. It's now time for the superintendent's comments. Good evening, everyone, everyone and especially Ms. Buchanan. Um, we've had a very positive start to this school year, um, and I want to see a number of our administrators uh, in the stands, and they have smiles on their faces, so that just echoes that That's just because start. tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> 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 I want to begin tonight by thanking our county commissioners for transferring the remaining appropriation of operating funds uh, to our budget. Uh, the $1.56 million represented a significant major majority of salary and benefits for all of our locally paid staff throughout the school district. And this transfer is also significant to allow Mrs. Frisbee, who has the biggest smile on her face uh, after that uh, decision or vote, um, to present a balanced um, annual budget to you, the board, as we tip typically do at our October board meeting. Likewise, I want to extend our appreciation to the commissioners for supporting the expansion of school resource officers into the elementary and intermediate schools. While school um, resource officers are assigned at each middle and high school here in Buncombe County, the additional six officers will increase the coverage of our elementary and intermediate schools to two officers for each of the six district so we're very excited about that and we continue to designate um, school safety to receive the highest of our priorities uh, that's uh, nothing that is unusual across this entire nation as um, all systems begin a new school year and in fact our October 16th district uh, advisory district-wide advisory meeting uh, we will be focusing on school safety in that presentation and I should also note that this month has been declared uh, across North Carolina Safe Schools Month by our Department of Public Instruction and State Superintendent Mark Johnson. Our state legislature provided their emphasis on safety by granting $35 million in grant funding for various school safety related programs and of which $22 million has already been awarded. And I'm very pleased to say that we in Buncombe County um, have uh, are in the category of those awardees. Uh, we received $333,000 for our SROs 
and in addition to $230,000 uh, for behavioral health specialist and training that will go along with that that is very much needed in, uh, in our school system. And we have applied for and are currently awaiting news on a $120,000 request for school safety equipment uh, that will include door entry control systems. And I do want to thank Mr. Huff, David Thompson. I see Mr. Barry Pace up there. They have been uh, uh, busy writing those grants, and uh, we're two for three. And Mr. Pa Pace, the pressure is on you that we we're batting a thousand. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, again, we we appreciate. Uh, the funding from the state. I'm going to shift gears and I want to talk about our recently released accountability results that came from the 2017-18 school year. And I want to preface by saying we will always hold ourselves to the highest of standards. And uh, anytime we announce accolades, uh, we recognize that there is always room for improvement. But that said, I'm extremely proud of our results and the dedicated efforts of our administrators, our teachers, and our students as we emphasized a back-to-basics approach in the classrooms. And I see some smiles up there because back-to-basics was certainly our theme last year. Um, overall across the district, 36 of our 42 schools either met or exceeded their growth targets. And having spent some time looking across the state at other school systems, this is an outstanding achievement, people. Uh, we should be very proud of what took place regarding the growth. Uh, that equates to 86% of the schools in Buncombe County. And again, that is just outstanding when you compare that across systems in the state. Also want to note, uh, we have several middle school principals here that all of our middle schools either met or exceeded growth. And once again, I'm proud to recognize Valley Springs Middle School for their sixth consecutive year of exceeding their growth targets. And Emma Elementary, we're not going to forget them because this is the fifth year in a row that they exceeded growth expectations. And um, I, I can tell the public that um, in this business, that's incredible. Uh, especially at both of those both of those schools for different reasons. While I continue to advocate for a change in the 80-20 percentage, that's academic performance uh, to growth formula, 23 of our schools earned an A or B grade. And similar to the majority of A grade schools across North Carolina, our three early college, middle college, and Nesbitt Discovery represented cooperative innovative school models. So this, this was a pattern uh, that held very true across the state. Two of our schools remained on low performing status with D grades, although both did meet their growth targets. Across the state, and I did find this statistic, and again in, in defense of uh, it's time we change that formula. Uh, across the state, 69% of schools with 81% or more free or reduced lunch enrollment, and 45% of the schools with student populations of 69 to 80% uh, free or reduced uh, categories received Ds or F. That, that's just staggering. And again, I think that's clear proof that uh, it's time we look at this 80-20 formula. And especially for schools with those type of challenges, which includes a number of schools in the Buncombe County school system, um, it, it is a difficult formula to achieve success under. For such schools, again, achieving academic growth in their students' learning should certainly represent a much greater factor than in the current grading formula. So uh, with that, great start, Madam Chair, and I'm turning it back over to you. Well, thank you. We appreciate all the work that our um, teachers and staff have put into this, and also our students. You know, we can't succeed without their work and their dedication to completing those um, marks, those tests. It's now time for good news. Good evening, Dr. Baldwin, Madam Chair, members of the board. We have a full agenda of good news this evening. If David Ball could come on down, he's our BCS District Athletic Specialist. He's here to help us recognize just some of the folks that work with our student athletes during games and during practices to keep them safe. Just coming on the screen. 
Okay, we may have a picture come up on the screen here in a minute. We may not. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Baldwin, distinguished guests, good evening. It's my honor this evening to recognize Pardee Sports Medicine and Southeastern Sports Medicine and Orthopedics for their outstanding service in providing sports medicine services to Buncombe County Schools. These two groups, working in partnership together, provide athletic trainers, team physicians, and sports medicine services to Inca, Owen, and Reynolds High Schools, Cane Creek, Inca, Owen, and Reynolds Middle Schools. They currently serve seven of our 13 schools that have interscholastic athletic programs. I would like to briefly describe the scope of sports medicine services that they provide to our schools. The services provided includes a minimum of two certified licensed athletic trainers to serve each high school and its feeder middle school. They must provide a team physician for each school district. They must provide a clinical team to include a board certified sports medicine physician, an orthopedic surgeon, a primary care physician, and access to a network of specialists engaged with each of our schools to maximize athletic performance, prevent injury, and provide treatment and rehabilitation when injuries occur. Also provided will be annual physical exams for our student athletes, baseline and post-concussion testing of our student athletes, required annual concussion training updates for the coaching staffs of our schools, annual AED CPR training for our coaching staffs, the management of a student athlete athletic training program in our schools, and the priority that our athletes will receive easy access to their injury clinics and facilities of our sports medicine providers. Madam Chair, I believe today that athletes and coaches in Buncombe County Schools are receiving the best sports medicine care, support, and services of any time in the history of our school system. It says I'm old, too. I know the whole history. <laughs> You're younger <laughs> than I am. <laughs> we are very fortunate to have such outstanding sports medicine groups working with our schools. In recognition of this, we would like to express our appreciation and recognize Pardee Sports Medicine and Southeastern Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. Greg Motley, representing Pardee Sports Medicine and Southeastern Sports Medicine Orthopedics to come forward. And I would also like to say that, show my confidence in Greg and his group, my immediate family's had five surgeries from him, so uh, we've got a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of confidence in him. I would like to ask Mr. Queen, Ms. McMahon, and Dr. Baldwin to come forward as well as we do the presentation of plaques. Did you expect he'd give you some kind of cut on the fee when you announced that, David? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's okay. We'll let Cindy and Max take this one. Get a microphone, Dr. Martin. Yeah. <laughs> Small rural town in Glasgow, Kentucky. Uh, this town and what you do as teachers, administrators, uh, allowed me to do to come in town. Uh, wasn't very a smart move to take away all the physicals from all the family physicians uh, and internal medicine. And I didn't realize that would make everyone mad when we started doing the physicals. And then one of the coaches one time at Inca, after we did. Uh, about 400 physicals, 
Uh, he came up and said, Dr. Molly, look at this wad of money. And I said, what did you do? He said, I collected $10 per physical. I was like, what are we going to do with that? So anyway, what we did was we started donating it back to the school. And it's an honor and a privilege to be in, uh, on a field uh, in a locker room, uh, but especially having had two daughters that uh, attended here at Buncombe County School under a very good uh, principal and administrator. Uh, my daughters have done exceedingly exceptional under this school system. Uh, it's just an honor and privilege to take care of the athletes. Uh, it's sad when they get hurt, but we take pride in getting them back. And having been on the other side of the scalpel, it is something that's not fun when you do have an athlete that gets hurt. But because of the great teachers and administration and support, uh, getting athletes back in the classroom, uh, getting them over that hump, getting them back successful in the classroom, that's what you all do great. And we thank you for working with us and getting them back academically. And uh, we get them back out on the field. It's a joy for us to work with you guys and be available for you at any time. Thank you for these awards. That's great. Thank you. It's also um, comforting as a board member to sit in those ball games and watch those people that you know are going to take care of our students that are there. And believe you me, this board member and I'm sure, I'm sure all seven of us sit there and look to see um, how quickly your people get to our injuries. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Our recognition, uh, we'd like to recognize our finance department for a couple of different awards. So first up, could Ms. Frisbee and everyone in finance who's here today come on forward to the middle? It's your time to shine. <laughs> Group shot. So the first recognition is uh, the finance department has earned the, and I practiced this all afternoon, so everyone hold on. The Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting, and they've also received the Association of School Business Officials International Certificate of, Ex Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting, and that's for their comprehensive annual financial report. So hope I did a good job. Applause for me. So um, we're very grateful and appreciative for this recognition. Um, this is what we do. We're being due diligent and promoting transparency by um, submitting this, this report to GFOA and uh, ASBO. But um, it would not um, happen without this, this team here. I have a few of my, my finance team here. Um, but without their input and support, and uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, uh, so we're, I'm grateful for them and for what they do, and uh, we're, we're grateful for this recognition. So, thank you. I don't, I don't speak their language. You know, it's a different language than the rest of us talk when they talk about money. <laughs> All right, everyone, I want you to introduce yourselves. I'm going to pass the mic down. Speak like this. <laughs> Tell them what you do. In, in words we can understand. <laughs> I'm Denise McLemore. I am the accounting, uh, reporting, accounting, reporting accounting reporting manager. <laughs> yeah, I can't talk now. I'm Pam Rowe. I'm the internal auditor. I'm Jason Monstrella. I'm, uh, I assist payroll and accounts payable with uh, printing of checks, and I also am the tech for the building. So, I'm Carol Edge. I'm in the budget office. Tiffany McCants, Purchasing and Risk Control Manager. I also found out that Jason's part-time job is leading people to the Minotaurium when they get lost. So that's what we call added benefit. <laughs> Great job. 
All right, so while Ms. Frisbee gathers her paperwork and her notes, the next uh, item that we want to recognize are our employees who've graduated from the NC ASBO Treasury Academy. So, Madam Chair, Superintendent Baldwin, members of the board, I am just humbled and honored to be here to recognize this stellar group of young ladies who went through the NC ASBO Treasurer Academy and graduated um, back in the spring. And um, we had 12 members, 12 school bookkeepers that participated in this, um, this academy. And um, I want to give you a little bit of background about it. Um, so um, the NC ASBO School Treasurer Academy was developed as an expansion of the NC ASBO School Business Management Academy, which is what I went through. Um, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> the course consists of 12 classes ranging from general accounting, school finance law, human resources, and effective communications. These classes help the school treasurer with their responsibility in providing accurate financial information and useful data for the administration of special funds for individual schools. Upon completion of the course, the school treasurer receives a certificate from the NC ASBO School Treasurer Academy indicating their successful participation in the classes offered. So this academy consisted of 42 hours. It was, each class was three and a half hours, and it totally focused on school finance. And you all know school finance is a beast of its own. Mm -hmm. So it was honed in for, for school, individual school um, accounting. So uh, to me, the reason I, I'm just honored that these, these ladies participate in this because it shows their commitment to what they do. And uh, you know, they're, they're, they're just great. What they contribute to Buckham County Schools is just invaluable. So I also want to thank the principals for allowing them the opportunity to be away from their school to take these courses because um, that, that's time away from their school. And we hosted the academy here and, and several other districts participated. So, um, but um, I just want to say that it's my honor and privilege to um, award the following people a certificate of completion for the Treasure Academy. So when I call your name, if you'll come on down. And Sharon Briggs, who's with the Nesbitt Discovery Academy. <laughs> Cindy Jones with North Windy Ridge. Michelle Maynard from T.C. Robertson. <laughs> Donna Palmer from Inca High School. And I told Miss Val, I was just going to call her Miss Val because I will butcher her last name. So Miss Val from C.T. Kuntz and Immediate. <laughs> from Cane Creek Middle School. And Pam Rowe from the School Finance Department. And I have to have a special shout out to Pam. Um, this so every time we had a meeting she would send out the emails and when we had a class so she was instrumental in organizing this so each um, each um, graduate could um, attend the classes now we had we had five people that could not attend um, Tracy Merrill who is now in the student services department she was unable to attend uh, Serena Moss from North Buckham High School Ramona Shuford from um, Emma 
uh, Fran Warren from Glen Arden and Jessica Smith and her school escapes me, but they were unable to attend, but they are also uh, graduates at this academy. So let's give them a big round of applause. Stay where you are, Ms. Rowe, come back. And could the finance team come back down for one last group shot? Because uh, it's my first night doing a board meeting, apparently. And I forgot your plaque. So come on down for one more group shot, Ms. Brisby. Yeah, I, I just want to say one other thing about this NC ASBO Treasure Academy. We just started our second uh, cohort, and we've got 12 more bookkeepers in it. So, oh. yay. So, let me put this somewhere. In with me, come on. Dr. Baldwin, Madam Chair, can you guys hop up again? Sure. Thank you. Take two. Take two. We're good. Pretend like you guys didn't just do this a few minutes ago. Just keep on smiling. Thank you, guys. And for our final piece of good news this evening, Ms. Debbie Bryant is going to come on down. She is our Healthful Living Coordinator for the district. She's going to talk about our partnership with Jump Rope for Heart. Thank you, Madam Chair, Superintendent Baldwin, and board members. It's my pleasure to be here tonight with you. Someone very wise once said that it's important for one to know the purpose, the reason that you do something. It's your why. And so tonight you're going to meet one of our whys. Um, for the past 25 plus years, our schools have participated in our uh, activities that promote um, the American Heart Association whether it be through Jump Rope for Heart or Hoops for Heart, many different areas. Um, so tonight we have with us the, uh, the Youth Market Director for our area in Western North Carolina. Her name is Erin DeRosia, and you'll meet some other folks as well um, as she introduces them. Thank you, Debbie. So, like Debbie said, my name is Erin DeRosier, and I'm with the American Heart Association and Kids Heart Challenge, which some of you might remember as Jump Rope for Heart or Hoops for Heart. Our program really focuses on heart education within the schools, with elementary school, middle school, and high school, where we're engaging the students through jump rope activities, basketball activities, and anything that gets them moving. Now, one of the things that we ask the students to think about every single year is why are they doing jump rope for or why are they doing kids heart challenge? Do they have a personal connection? Do they have someone in their family who's had a heart attack, who's had a stroke? And we also like to bring in our heart heroes that we like to call them. And some of these heart heroes end up inspiring our students. So last year, um, a now fifth grader inspired thousands of children across Western North Carolina and she continues to do so. And so I would like to share her story with you tonight. Hey, I'm Anne Louise, and I am a heart hero, and I am nine years old, and I go to Hominy Valley Elementary, and I am in fourth grade. We found out at 22 weeks in utero that Anne Louise had critical aortic stenosis developing into hypoplastic left heart syndrome. Hypoplastic left heart syndrome and um, there weren't many options that were given to Anne Louise with hypoplastic left heart. She would have been born with half a heart. So uh, we started doing research um, because we didn't like the options that were given to us. And we found... Um, the cardiac intervention yeah. program at Boston Children's. Yes. And we spoke to them a few days before Thanksgiving. And made the decision in, in 2007 before 
Anne Louise was born to travel to Boston Children's um, the Monday after Thanksgiving. And um, they did testing in, on, on Anne Louise while in utero and came back and talked to Mary Beth and I about what possibilities and options we had. And Louise has had uh, a series of uh, three open heart surgeries. So they replaced her, um, her aortic valve with her pulmonary valve because her pulmonary valve was in good shape. And then she had a Ross Kono procedure. She's also had where they have um, taken, um, she's done mitral valve repair but her mitral valve, um, they weren't able to save it. And so they replaced her mitral valve with a mechanical, mechanical valve. So she has a mechanical mitral valve. Um, so she's, uh, she's pretty special. Um, you can hear her valve sometimes clicking. If you're real quiet, then that's her mechanical valve. She will need surgeries throughout her life as she grows and as she outgrows her valves. Um, but that's okay, We're, we'll take it. Um, we have a wonderful um, staff at Hominy Valley Elementary School here in town in Buckingham County. We coordinate with Coach Andrews, with uh, her teachers, with um, Nurse Leslie, um, she's the school nurse. Um, Miss Walker, who's the principal, and if Anne Louise's INR is too high, um, which means she has a potential for bleeding, we will notify Coach Andrews so she stays out of gym or has a modified activity. Um, and then if it's too low, again, you risk a blood clot. So um, we just watch her, and her teachers watch her, and um, you know, with playgrounds, you know, because it's not just in gym class, but we want her to be able to run with her peers and have fun with her peers and um, participate. I don't think we would be able to do it though um, without um, the, the help, you know, people say it takes a village and so um, we have a great team that um, has been, you know, established at Hominy Valley to help. And without support from Jump Rope for Heart, the American Heart Association, um, programs that fund research and experimental um, surgeries, we wouldn't have Anne Louise. Um, she would not be here had she been born just a couple of years before um, because of all the advances in medical technology and science. And so thank you so much for your support. The American Heart Association and the research provided by the American Heart Association is really important to um, all of the kids that are like Anne Louise and like Mary Beth said, absolutely, we, um, if, if, if the research advancement is not happening in the, um, in the heart world as fast as it is, then we wouldn't, um, and we certainly wouldn't be as healthy as she is now. So we're extremely grateful for those that are support American Heart Association and Jump Rope for Heart. Thank you for participating in Jump Rope for Heart. Issue because I think I do every time after I see that. So Anne Louise is one of the kindest people that I have ever met. Um, she has more grit than I think most of us in this room do. And it's my pleasure and my honor to have her and her family here with us this evening. She has inspired many students across Western North Carolina, many of whom have written letters, drawn pictures, or they've dedicated their Jump Rope for Heart or Hoops for Heart event in her honor last year. Anne Louise, Mary Beth, Andrew, Graham, and the rest of your family, thank you for all that you have done this past year and in years before that. We are all fighting beside you. Please join me in recognizing one of the many heart heroes in our community, Anne Louise Atherton.
So at this time, I would like to quickly run through the schools that have participated um, in the 2017-2018 Jump Rope for Heart and Hoops for Heart or Kids Heart Challenge. So if you have a representative from your school, please come on down. You will grab a certificate from Debbie, and Ann Louise will be here to present it to you as well. So we have Barnersville Elementary School, Bell Elementary School, Black Mountain Elementary School, Black Mountain Primary School, Candler Elementary School, Emma Elementary School, Irwin Middle School, Fairview Elementary School, Glen Arden Elementary School, Hominy Valley Elementary School, Johnston Elementary School, Leicester Elementary School, North Buncombe Elementary School, Oakley Elementary, Pisgah Elementary School, W.D. Williams Elementary School, Weaverville Primary School, Estes Elementary School, and Woodfin Elementary School. So thank you so much for all of your participation last year. Jenny, come back. Yeah, yeah. Jenny, come back. We have come on pictures. down for a group shot all together now. Well, oh, yeah. thank you. and Dr. Baldwin, Madam Chair. All right, everyone, look at that. It's good news for the evening. What a way to end. Um, at this time, we have a curriculum feature. Yes, Chair, Dr. Baldwin, board members, good evening. And I think I need Anna Louise to teach me how to do a hula hoop. <laughs> she could teach many of us how to do that and be ready for jump rope for heart. So thank you for being here this evening with us. Tonight, we're going to change gears and talk a little bit about uh, the guiding principle, safety and support systems from the strategic plan. Section two, letter I, talks about school nutrition. So we want to give you updates on many of our programs in the cafeterias that you may see and hear about, talk a little bit about summer meals and how that went, and then some ABCs about meals and more. So I'm going to introduce our director, Lisa Payne, and she will introduce staff and share a little bit with you this evening. Thank you, Mr. Swanger. Dr. Baldwin, Madam Chair, members of the board, that's a hard act to follow. <laughs> that is a hard act to follow. So what was beautiful about Anna and Louisa is that in school nutrition, we strive to serve children healthy and delicious meals to prevent and help with chronic illnesses. So I wish she was here to hear how much we love her and every other child in Buncombe County. My staff, my leadership team, Cheryl Harris, Assistant Director, Debbie Timpson, Superintendent, uh, Superintendent, I'm sorry, De Dr. Baldwin, be careful, she's after me. <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor, Taylor uh, Nobles, CN Specialist, Registered Dietitian, and Tammy Robinson, Interim uh, Supervisor and Field Manager. We're excited to be here. We're going to show what we're doing, a little bit of highlights from 2017-18, a little bit going in forward into 18 and 19. And what we have in front of us right now is a wordle, a word, a cloud that I learned this week. And it has a lot of words which are ingredients that go into our total program. So we're kind of the school nutrition alphabet soup. A is for administration. Our programs are the National School Lunch Program, National Breakfast Program, Summer Food Service Program, After School Snack Program, and the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program. B, B is for Buncombe County. Am I off of it? B is for Buncombe County Meals and Snacks Served in 2018. On our National School Lunch Program, we served 2,451,907 meals in 180 days of service. Our National Breakfast Program, we've served 1,879,000 meals in 
22 meals in 180 days. Our summer food service program, 86,303 meals in 44 days. Our after school snack program, uh, 86,303, and those days vary depending on the schools. And our fresh fruit and vegetable program, 221,600 meals. So we were busy, and we have 230 employees that make that happen. And then C, out of our ABC, C is for celebration, curriculum, customers, and cafeterias as learning labs. Customer participations, our menus are student tested and student driven. Customers, please and thank you. We say that a lot. Our rolling to feed bus, you'll see a picture of it here a little bit more soon. Our produce fairs where our registered dietitian goes out into the schools, eight elementary schools per year, and teaches our students about local foods, fruits and vegetables, and exotic fruits and vegetables. Uh, our School Health Advisory Council, Pat Bryan is our liaison, thank you. Debbie Bryant serves that with me as well. And we've also won the Turn Up the Beat Award again this year. So we're turning up the beat as we go in 2018. Our Healthy U.S. School Challenge continues for 1819. Uh, we celebrate our Caliente Cowboys from Irwin High and everything they contributed in the North Carolina Regional in Greensboro cooking up school food service. Our farm to school initiative is growing. Our wellness teams are strong. And the last one is GAP. And that's something I haven't said in front of you before. And that's Lewis Foote from Community High School. And he is going through GAP good agricultural practices for certification so he can start bringing food from his garden to serve our students in Buncombe Community School. So that's really, really exciting stuff stuff. So, so we've covered some ABCs. Now we're going to look at a few things. This is just a red, white, and blue, fresh blueberries, fresh raspberries, strawberries, and white cheese, because in our program, we have to buy American, and that's some local produce, and just we wanted to show how pretty that food is. And next, we're going to celebrate Rolling to Feed, and Cheryl Harris, you're going to tell us a little bit about that, right? Hello. Um, the Rolling to Feed bus, the idea took place about two to three years ago, and finally this year it came to fruition with the help of a lot of community partners. Um, we are very thankful to have its inaugural run to D Review Apartments in August of this year. Uh, students were able to board the bus with their families and enjoy a meal. Um, within days, it was then rolling on to Leicester Community Center as well, where um, they were able to also board the bus and enjoy their meals. Our future plans for the Rolling to Feed bus include um, retrofitting it into a mobile cafe where we can reach more rural areas where children may not be able to get to summer feeding sites. And we also hope to implement it during the school year. There's a couple of different plans in the works at this time. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Cheryl. Next, we have a picture of Dr. Baldwin serving mm -hmm. summer meals. He looks very happy, and the students that are receiving the meals look very happy. Do I need to move that over? Okay. And then this summer, thank you to Communication Station, her team, of course, Tim and Ben, always great support. Students ready to learn. This is a school nutrition recipe booklet that these children have to take home so they can become future employees for our school food service organization. Got milk. That's one of our promotions that we did last year. Debbie Timpson, you want to tell us what we're going to see sure. this year? Um, Got Milk is just around the corner, September 26. Um, we also have North Carolina Crunch this year in October, October 3rd, where we're supporting our local farmers with apples, and all of the kids will be crunching apples on October 3rd. And following that, of course, is our school lunch, um, National Lunch Week. And our theme for that this year is... Lots to love. Lots and lots to love. Lots and to you'll love. see lots of hearts, lots of smiles, lots of happy faces. <laughs> lots to love. Thank you, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Well, you can stay with me because um, this is a picture at lunchtime at North Buncombe Elementary, one of their favorite times of day. And we always love it when we have a parent at the cafeteria having lunch with us. Another motto we've adopted in our back-to-school training kickoff was be our guest. 
Debbie, you were instrumental in that. Be Our Guest basically is, everybody knows from Beauty and the Beast, Be Our Guest, be welcoming, be smiling, be come on, have a good food. We're really working on our customer service this year. We're working on our quality of our food, our presentation of our food, um, our thank yous, and you know, just welcoming these students to come through. We don't know what kind of day they've had. We don't know what kind of morning they've had. And so we're there to support them and feed their tummies and get them going to learn. So thank you. Thank you. All right, there's a great picture we've seen, Caliente Cowboys. We wanted to show that again from Irwin High School. And this is, we have a great contest. And Taylor, I'm going to let you share information about our contest. And everybody has to get involved with this because it ends tomorrow. Yes, so we've created a friendly competition with the School Nutrition Association where we've invited the cafeteria managers to send bulletin boards from the beginning of the school year. And we have posted these on Facebook for the public to vote for. So the winning school will get an award from the School Nutrition Association. Voting ends tomorrow at about 12. So if everyone can like us on Facebook, we are Buncombe County Schools School Nutrition. And there's just a few more. And as you can see, they all support nutrition education. They all support Eat Smart, Move More, and physical education in our schools. Uh, Johnston Elementary, I, don't, I have all my employees are my favorites. All my children are my favorites. I, I don't have any favorites because everybody's my favorite. All these bull, bull, billboards are my favorite. But I did save this one for last because it says, Welcome back, bears, now serving up smiles. And how perfect is that in a food service organization? And perfect in our food service organization because we're working with Buncombe County to prepare their students for their tomorrows. And our school meals improve learning environments. And we truly believe that nutritious meals help children learn. And so I'm gonna be a little bit silly here, believe it or not, and I'm gonna give credit to Brian Chandler, for his students at the end of the video yesterday, I know that they were celebrating his getting principal of the year, but it was so perfect because they looked so happy eating those school meals, and those school meals are empty, and they are clapping, and they're standing up. So we, we kind of we kind of took a tidbit of that for this presentation. So we have covered some ABCs, and now we want to look at our P's and Q's and make sure that we're minding our P's and Q's. And in doing that, we have to look at P for partnerships, thank Buncombe County Schools Board of Education, you, of course, and all of the departments within the organization for with whom out, without, we could not do what we do each day. Buncombe Community uh, Schools Foundation for, for Lisa Atkins' vision in helping us find the funding for our bus, Park Ridge Hospital, our biggest donation for the bus, United Way, Ms. Swanger's program with our homework diners, we love serving them, Cheetah Larton's son, the graphics for our rolling to feed bus, care partners, and then Appalachian Sustainable Agriculture Project who does an amazing job supporting our local farm to school initiative. So P is for partnerships. P is also for professional development. And I won't read through all of that for the sake of time, but it just lets you know from my level to a part-time employee, everyone has to maintain certain certifications so that they are always abreast with current trends in school nutrition and food service. And then, of course, here's a great picture from last year of our school nutrition professionals and their support teams, their principals, and their administrators for whom without them they could not be successful. So our P's and now our Q's, and Q is for questions. And Tammy Robinson, I didn't want to leave you out. I'm sorry, I did. So we're going to back up one slide in our minds and just let Tammy give a little bit of the training stuff. I'm so sorry, and you love to talk. I was so close to getting out of that. <laughs> but you've heard all the amazing things that's happening in school nutrition, but we, we take it to a whole nother level. We are known as the lunch ladies, but we're trying to move into the, the new age, and with all our training, a lot, of, all of our managers have had over 30 hours of training before the kids even hit the doors this year. 
So we're trying to move to culinary professionals. <laughs> Like and we want that. to leave the lunch yeah. lady behind because we're operating restaurants right. in these schools. So we're training up culinary professionals for the new age and not so much lunch ladies anymore. We have a new attitude, I believe, is how that goes, right? We have a new attitude. Well, actually, all of our folks, we only have 10 that are left, and they'll receive training on October 15th. They've all gone through chef ambassador training. So I watch, and, and, and I've got principals in here that have grown, watched their staff grow in amazing leaps and bounds just in the past year. So the final ruling from Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act 2010 is now a final rule. We have to take it to the next level, and I'm going to use the word, I wasn't going to use it, but I'm going to do it, say quick essential, I feel like, for what we do, we're the best food service operation in Western North Carolina, and, and I'd put us against any school food service team in the state or nation. So we're proud, and we thank you for listening. Well, you should be. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I understand we don't have any public comment tonight, so we're moving on to the action agenda. And the item, the one singular item on the action agenda is the pool replacement, water line easement, and transfer. I'm looking for a motion to authorize execution of owner certificate of completion and closeout documents necessary to transfer the new water line at the pool at T.C. Robertson High School to the city of Asheville. Um, any board members have questions in this regard? Mr. Bryant. I do, Mr. Fearley. Um, just out of curiosity, because the documents are not completed, has the water line already been done, one, and if so, what's the size of the easement? How long is it and how wide is that water easement? Do you know? It goes from the road to the pool. Okay. <laughs> how, wide of an, how wide of an easement is a water easement? Do you know? Is it a 10-foot? I. Okay. It's um, three feet on each side of, is my recollection. I may be wrong on that. So it's three, not four on each side of the line. And That's on each side right. of the line, and um, it just allows them to get in there and right. do maintenance on that. And it, has, it is finished? It has been constructed? or, or this It has. Is... It hasn't been activated right. until this all goes through, but it's been uh, put in place, tested, and it's ready to go contingent upon this and I was just it doesn't matter about the size I was just curious if you knew the size I know how wide typically the utility easements are but I, I don't know that we've ever had a water yeah, and easement and come I, to the I, board. I, I could be wrong curious. on that I'm, I'm that's from Sorry. memory uh, but it allows them to get in there and you know make repairs as right. necessary and I'm going down there tomorrow. I'll measure it for you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, if Let it's in the know. ground and covered, you won't be, unless they've still got it marked, you, you won't be able you to. You can point it out to me. Okay. I'll, I'll take, <laughs> take my tape measure. Tape measure. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? I have a question, possibly to the attorney. It talks about this being a permanent easement. And should at some point in the future a need arise that a building be sited on that site, is there provisions or how would we go about relocating that since the easement has been granted as a permanent condition? We would have to relocate the water line. And once we relocated the water line, we would then give the city of Asheville an easement over the, the current or the, the new water line position, and thereby obtaining permission from them to, to build over what is now the current water so long, line. So long as we retain the right to relocate and provide a separate easement, the city of Asheville does not retain a right to refuse us the opportunity to do that. I'm not sure of that answer. I Dirt think, law is not my specialty. I, think it's, I don't know that it would ever happen, but I would hate to <laughs> yeah. be putting a corner. I mean, I don't, I don't see why they why they would if we were if we were going to to pay for and move the water line. Yeah. Now, if it, if it was a sewer line, <laughs> probably be very difficult to get it. You know, you, you can't build over it. But but um, I don't I don't under, I don't think the city would ever stop us from doing that if we were going to move it and and moving it wouldn't harm any other utility easements or water line easements in the in the area yeah. I can add that it has been located in a kind of a
peripheral location to accommodate potential future Future. development. But that's not saying that the development could take on a character that we don't envision at this time. Thank you. This is another legal question, and maybe it's a stupid question, but that's okay. Um, So the, what, so it's a water line easement and transfer. So can you explain the difference between the easement and the transfer? Because in the initial paragraph it says a related easement is required. And so I thought we were just granting an easement. But then in the recommendation it says we're going to transfer the water line to them. So will they actually own the water line or will they just have the easement? Well, if you go to the, if you go to the actual document, it looks like we are giving them the right therefore an easement to construct, operate, maintain, repair uh, the water line uh, for public use. And then of course, the, so basically, I mean, they are taking ownership of the, of the water line because they have the right to come in and do it, but then the court, they also have the easement over our land to come in and repair it as well. Okay, so, so the transfer is for the water yeah. line, the easement is for the property. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Hmm. I'm over here smiling because we have this issue at North Buncombe and with a water line and Lord have mercy, we spent two and a half hours this morning on on that issue. So it's real important, I think, that we ask these questions and we understand where the water line is. Who's going to take care of it? Uh, Other questions from board members? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve. Madam Chair, I move that we authorize the the execution of the owner's certificate of completion and close out documents necessary for this transfer. Thank you. Could I get a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Now we thank you, Mr. Fairley. We move on to the consent agenda and on the consent agenda we have the minutes from October, uh, October, August 9 um, meeting open session, the personnel report with an addendum T.C. Robertson High School use of capital outlay athletic allotment. Uh, Owen Middle School use of capital outlay athletic um, allotment. Advisory Council members for 2018-19. Advisory Council request to remove and add members. And Advisory Council member change. Policies for second reading are also under the consent agenda. And that has to do with uh, policy 4316 school dress code. Policy 4400 attendance, policy 5010 parent organizations, policy 6220 operation of student food service. Uh huh. Okay, I would entertain a motion to improve. I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved, Madam Chair. Thank you. Could I get a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'll um, let you guys know that um, Ms. Buchanan's in the back and she's voting and there's a technical person back there recording her vote. So um, she, she can participate in, um, in this board meeting. Um, on the information agenda, excuse me, we have the 2018-2019 uh, Theala bus list and the announcement of our future uh, meetings. We have Teacher of the Year on September 12th. Uh, NCSBA District 8 meeting is to be held at West Henderson High School on September 27. The next board meeting is October 4, right here. And the Buncombe County School District wide advisory council meeting will be held October 16 at 6 o'clock at North Buncombe High School. I would entertain a Madam, motion. Madam Chair, a moment of privilege. Are you going to you talk adjourned? ugly about North no, Buncombe? No, no. Uh, I had lunch with well, I had lunch with Bill Murdoch last week, uh, and he asked me to convey an invitation to all of the board members. Uh, Wednesday, the twelfth of September. That's next week. Uh, at Outback Steakhouse, Evelyn has their uh, kickoff for the walk, run, roll fundraiser, and then on the nineteenth, which is the following re- uh, Wednesday, they have their lunch again at Outback. Uh, f- kicking off the um, uh, pumpkin sales, uh, the, uh, the, the pumpkin uh, and the ghosts and all the things that they do with that, those two fundraisers. And they, uh, he asked me to extend an invitation to all board members 
uh, to both of those events if you would like to come, starting at 1130 both days uh, at Outback uh, as a guest of Evelyn Charities. Thank you very much. I understand Mr. Bryant and his wife have, have uh, already committed to the walk run role. Um, we have been recruited by the new principal at Johnston Elementary and we have, yes, we've committed to work to walk with that team. Um, yes. So if y'all want to take pictures, you can go on over to Johnston. And <laughs> it's a fun day. <laughs> okay. I'm entertaining a motion to adjourn. Y'all so love us so, so much. Moved. We want to thank you very much. Can I get a second? A second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? Y'all have a good month. We'll see you next time.